This is the entrance to Milo Cave, uh, much like Julia Cave. Um, I believe that it's uh, calcite that has been dissolved, um, a fissure of calcite, and to either side it appears to be marble. Um, you'll notice right in the foreground there are two large beams that have either been dumped or washed into the entrance, and it would appear that this, this cave is multi-level. Um, water flows in the top and resurges out at a lower level. The cave goes in a short distance uh, al along a sloping fissure, and uh, this uh, particular spot, you can see uh, Jeff, um, it's deceptively a tight squeeze. Uh, initially it looks quite easy to fit into, but once you actually get down into there, there's a, a rock that's poking into your belly, or at least it was into mine, and um, it made it quite difficult tr to uh, traverse. The upper section of, of Milo Cave uh, appears to pinch down quite quickly. Um, and so Jeff and I uh, entered down through the, the lower entrance, the resurgence, um, along a, a crawl space. Um, it looked like a, quite an outwash of water would flood out at certain times of the year, so obviously that's where we entered inwards. Following up the gravel bed, it appears to, to stretch off into the darkness, and from further on there's a, a distinctly cold breeze, which is encouraging. There is uh, limited maneuverability as the roof drops right down uh, quite close to the to the cobbled crawlway and um, of particular interest is the discovery that um, there's a gully actually off on the left hand side and it's quite easy to crawl along there or at least it is for a little further and uh, you're in a, a wide bedding plane uh, the water appears to wash in from the right from from possibly the upper entrance and yet further ahead uh, is where the breeze is coming from and where the gully leads to. So the bedding plane continues onward in a relatively horizontal way and when I actually looked up on the surface it appears that it may continue on underneath a huge mound of granite. Here we are in a newly discovered revisited Milo's cave. Boy is it low. Um, we can dig out the gravel. Uh, from my perspective, this is me starting to get a bit tight around the rib cage and the belly. Uh, that's an important uh, point. Time to lose a little weight. Maybe some huge spiders up on the roof there. Um, I'm thinking it's, it's kind of a place where we want to revisit with a shovel. Um, some very large, almost branch light white fungus up ahead. A couple of years ago, I visited this place called Skinner's Marsh. And um, what you're seeing in this picture is a crayfish who's busily feasting on many little minnows and other creatures that have been pollywogs, been trapped as the water sunk beneath the surface. And of course, there are puddles all over filled with these fish and feasting crayfish. Notice its color. It's a sort of opaque brown color. Now, when I was backing out of the, the Milo cave, what did I see but this very pale, almost translucent shelled um, crayfish, which to me, would suggest uh, some form of troglobite adaptation. Um, being beneath the surface without sunlight, the crayfish obviously has begun adapting as such, losing its pigment. So, I mean, that suggests the possibility of, of tunnels quite a bit further on. Now, of course, troglobite adaptation is not an immediate thing. You don't one day um, suddenly start producing albino crayfish. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that. It takes place over thousands and thousands of generations. So, I mean, over here we've got a, a little snippet or a cartoon from my wife Maggie on, on just that subject. So when I saw that crayfish in the process of, of adapting and changing, it made me realize that there's likely a, a, a huge ecosystem or a large ecosystem where the creatures have never seen the light of day. So very encouraging and the thought that possibly under that large granite hill in the direction in which the tunnel heads, there must be some significant tunnel system and of course the washing water coming from somewhere that I'm yet to discover, um, possibly a, a sinkhole of some type. So we're yet to kind of trudge through the bush and see what we can find. If the possibility of uh, undiscovered caves interests you, consider uh, purchasing my book, Caving in Ontario, Exploring Buried Karst by Michael Gordon. Or you might also want to check out my website, www.rockwatching.wordpress.com.